Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at how to create a module in Terraform. And specifically, we're going to kick it off by showing you how to use a publicly available VPC module that allows you to create a VPC with just a couple of lines of Terraform, which is super useful because building out a VPC by hand takes quite a lot of time. Um, I used to do this back in the day before there were public modules available. So we'll, we're going to start by doing that, and then we're going to work through creating our own module. Now, today is going to be the first of a two-part episode um, because uh, sharing your module and publishing it and adding versions to it is quite a bit of work and also quite a lot of detail. So today we're just focusing on how to create a module locally. So let's jump into that. Okay, so we are exactly where we were the previous time. Um, the only change is that I have moved the dev production and testing environment variable files into a folder called variables over here. Um, so what I want to do now is to show you why you would want to use a module first. Because if you don't feel this value, you probably won't spend the time to learn modules. So let's quickly go back to our example file over here. So let's say I wanted to go to uh, create my own VPC. Now a VPC typically consists of the actual VPC. Then you have got um, subnets. And uh, if you want high availability, you would likely need at least two of these. And probably you want to have public as well as private ones. So now when we look at this, um, that equals another four resources. Cool. Now, to be able to communicate with the internet, public subnets need an internet gateway. So we add one of those. And to be able to actually route that, we also need at least one root table. That root table needs um, a, an entry to connect, um, to know how to route to our internet gateway. So root for IG. Um, and that just covers the public subnets. Now, private subnets, we need at least one NAT gateway. And ditto, we need at least um, a root table for that, etc. So you start to get the point here where I'm not even going to continue here because this isn't all of the components you need for that. So we are already talking um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten um, components. And you can imagine each of these being a resource block referencing all of them. So let me show you how to do it much easier. Well, for that we go to the public repository of uh, modules. So we're going to go Terraform module. Um, so module uh, VPC. Uh, there's a public, um, oh, that's big, uh, repo that has a whole bunch of um, uh, modules in it. And if you look at the URL over here, you can see that this is the Terraform registry, modules, Terraform AWS modules, VPC. Now, each of these modules are um, maintained um, by different people. So you can always have a look here in terms of who maintains it. Now, in this specific uh, case, sorry, let me just make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Um, Anton Babenko is actually um, a very avid uh, Terraform user. So the modules that he's built tend to be of very, very high quality. So I can highly recommend using the modules that he's built. So in this case, you can see the default one is this VPC module. So let's quickly take a look. We'll come back to the actual documentation at some point, but I just want to show you how easy it is to get a VPC up and running. So you scroll down, grab the example over here, copy it, and let's go back to our, sorry, where is my, there we go, module. So what you can see over here is that in this case, and let me just strip out the tags to make it a little bit shorter. What we have is a VPC where I specify the CIDR and it is across three availability zones. It, got, it has three private subnets. It's got three public subnets as well. And we are using NAT gateways and we are also enabling a VPN gateway. Now you can in theory take this out. So this is 11 lines of code to actually get it. So there is the value. So how do we go about building our own module? Well, that is uh, fairly simple. In Terraform, a module is just a grouping of code. So what you do is you create a directory to start off with, and let's call it our, um, let's say new module for now, and call it, um, um, start creating the files in there. Now the convention is, uh, let me just go in there quickly, is to create a file uh, called variables, main, and outputs. So I'm gonna quickly create them, tf, and you can call them whatever you want, because remember, similar to your normal Terraform directory. Terraform will just concatenate all of these files together, but it's easier to split them this way so you can find the different variables and outputs and specific components that you are creating. So uh, main.tf and touch um, uh, outputs.tf. Cool. So what we can do now is if I go back to my, uh, my variables over here, I'm just going to grab these as is because we're just going to dump this code in there effectively. We can say the cool 
similar to normal variables, you can have defaults and you pass them in. And then also for our main, so let's go to our example quickly over here. We've got our AWS instance that we want to use, and we put that inside the main file. Now, this is where you would specify all the different resources that you do want to um, uh, create. Now, what you see over here is that we are referencing that data um, uh, source that we had to look up the AMI. In our case, what we want to do is um, we want to call that, let's say, EC2 AMI ID. Now we have to go create a variable for this. So let's grab that and add it to our variables file quickly. And then like that, boom, type equals, uh, sorry, string like that. Cool. So now we've got most of this. Now, if we were to use this module at it as is, that'll create the infrastructure, but we won't be able to reference the infrastructure. So for, to be able to reference anything, we need to create an output. So let's say we wanted to get the instance ID. There's no way for us to access this instance ID inside um, or from inside the module unless we define an output. So what we would do over here is that we grab the um, just the sample um, like that and we go to the other folder and we define an output. Output, we call it uh, EC2 uh, instance uh, ID like that. And then we say uh, values is equal to and we can just um, output some values over here and in our case what we'll do is we'll say aws instance uh, and as a sample one and it, it is the id like that now what happens is this is our module so let's quickly go and add this to our example um file instead of having the specific um, section over here okay so we're going to start and just create a module because that's the keyword you have to provide it here and we are going to give it a name um uh, my ec2 instance Cool. And then we go ahead and now the first thing we have to specify here is where is the module source. So we're going to say, sorry, source. And we are going to say this is relative to the current directory. There's a directory called new module. Now I will have a follow up episode, um, the second one in the series uh, or mini series uh, that shows you how to actually host this module on Git and also how to do versioning for it, because that becomes very important later on. But for now, we just want to get it um, going quickly. Now that I've got this module reference, what I need to do is to pass in the variables. So if I take a look at the variables over here, I have to pass in the instance type. So I'm just going to paste this over here to make it easier to get into the main uh, project or the main module over there. Paste. This is an easy way to just ensure that you set all the variables for your module. So I cut that and now I'm going back to my uh, example over here. We paste that in um, and what I can see, actually, let me do this. I want to show you another kind of nice command. The instance type, what I do pass in is the var ec2 instance type. Uh, this is equal to the, sorry, var uh, dot uh, in, uh, ec2 uh, instance type. Uh, this is equal to var dot uh, number of instances. And this one is equal to uh, data dot, uh, what do we call that? up here uh oh, cloud quibus come on copy cloud quibus dot um id if i remember correctly just quickly double check uh ec2 terraform aws so i just need to double check what that value is from the data source that we grabbed um cool data oh i need to add the type that's what i forgot Something was bugging me here. Dip, dip. We need to grab that and specify the type of data source we're dealing with. Cool. There we go. Okay. So now what I have over here is um, this should allow us to actually create that instance. Um, and what I want to do is um, remove this sample instance. And now we're going to run. Uh, firstly, actually, before we do that, let me show you this nice command. So if you go Terraform Format. This is super useful because this actually goes and uh, cleans up your files. Oh, I'm in the wrong directory. Let's go one up. Um, and it actually has a, a defined formatting for your file. So it's always good to build this format command into your pipeline for your code uh, in terms of when you do your deployment. So now for the moment of truth, let's go ahead and say Terraform plan and see what happens. I made a mistake. I didn't install the model. Install. Okay, we need to install it first. So Terraform init. Uh, oh, here we go. This is broken. Let me take a look quickly at what's wrong. Okay, so the mistake that I had there is that it is value and not values for output. So 
that was a mistake on my side. Um, so now that I've run the init successfully, let's quickly see if I can do a terraform plan. Let's go terraform plan. Boom. And ah, we have to enter the value because we're not passing the variable file. So let's quickly fix that because I don't want to enter all of these. Um, so it is var file equals um, variables slash dev dot tf vars. Cool. Now the plan should be able to run. And in theory, it should delete the old instance and create this new module for us. So let's see what it says. Aha. Awesome. Plans to add one, plans to destroy one. So we are good to go. Now, the interesting part now is that if we want to, for example, reference that output, what we can do is have an output inside our main Terraform project as well. So I just want to show you how we can chain these together to make sure that we actually show the output. So let's say um, we say output uh, instance uh, ID, um, and then we just say value and equal is module dot uh, my EC2 instance dot, uh, what do we call the output? We called it EC2 instance ID. So I can copy it from there and we paste that back in again. And now what I can do is I'm going to run plan again. And what we will see at the end, once we apply is that it'll actually change us um, or tell us what that output is. So let's go ahead and say apply. And I'll just say yes immediately and then get that to run. So I'm quickly going to pause and just wait for that to finish the run. Cool. That was surprisingly quick. What you can see over here is that it actually took a full 13 seconds was the slowest resource here to destroy the instance. And I've got my new instance busy up and running. And also importantly, here you've got the outputs over here. Now, the other reason why outputs like this are important on a uh, Terraform project level is that there is a mechanism that you can reference these outputs between different Terraform states. So let's say I've got one project that is the, uh, let's say, base infrastructure for an environment. So um, let's say my dev environment, I've got a project where I create the load balancer, the API gateway, um, some specific IAM roles, uh, S3 buckets that are used by services, etc. Those are common to all the services and other infrastructure in that environment. That's one repository. Then I create a second repository for my first set, a service, a third uh, repository for my third service, etc. What I can do then is from the repository for my service, I can reference the remote state and actually read these values out of that state. But I'll do that in a future session. So that is it for today for covering um, the start of how to do modules. Um, the next session will focus on how to do um, modules and also commit them somewhere so you can reference them as from somewhere other than your local folders. So that is how you create a module locally. Um, remember, just keep an eye on the channel for the um, next part in this uh, two-part series. Well, I don't know if you call it a series or a mini-series, but there will be a second part coming soon about how to publish your module somewhere that you can reference it other than just your local machine. Um, as always, if you enjoyed this, please hit the like button. That helps other people um, discover this episode. And then also, please hit the subscribe button. That also helps it easier for me to, you know, let you know about these new episodes. And then lastly, um, I was looking at a couple of YouTube videos, and apparently you need to do this. Please hit the comments down below. Um, I don't know. Um, but seriously, uh, use the comments, ask me questions about this content or uh, other content you want me to cover or general AWS um, content. Um, I'm planning to do quite a few uh, different types of videos in the near future. I'm just busy lining them up and getting a couple into the pipeline first. But we hope to see you then for the next one. Bye.